You got your snacks. You good, man. You got your snacks. You good. All right. Big Money Bound TV, RRT Posse, YouTube. Welcome back, man. The long-awaited, highly requested Q&A, part three. I mean, part, part three. Part three. You ask, you shall receive. Hey, if you're new to my channel, please like, please subscribe, please hit the notification bell, please share my videos, go follow me on Instagram, drop some comments, leave some questions. Welcome to the RRT Posse. You're the newest member. Congratulations, you made it. So what we doing now, man? The Q&A. Let's stop the delay and stop the waits. Let's go. First question. Raz Zay. Hello, new RRT here. Had 10 vents and two non-invasive. NIV. That's what none, that's what NIV means, non-invasive. 17, 11, two treatment work units for 12 hours. I'm not really too sure what you mean by 17, 11, and two. I'm assuming you mean you had 17 treatments the first round, 11 treatments the second round, two treatments for the final round. Please let me know in the comments if I'm right or if I'm wrong. I'm sure a lot of people may be confused about that. Please let us know. We were short staffed again, if you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean, bro. I've been there and I'm still there. It is what it is, man. Hey, RRT Parson, we can handle anything, though. And we don't quit. I guess, how do you handle calls from floor RNs for treatments when you're too busy and ask them to take care of it? And ask them to take care of the treatment, but they report you for not showing up? Thank you. All right. If a nurse called me saying, give a treatment, but I'm too busy to give it, automatically, man, as soon as I pick up the phone, hey, how can I help you? I need a treatment, yada, yada. Hey, right now, we're extremely short and I'm very busy. I'll get there as soon as I can. Ask about the status of the patient. Like, are they decent? What's going on? Do they just want a treatment? Do they need a treatment? Like, let me know what's going on. Well, she may be like, she may have an attitude. Well, he needs his treatment right now. It's an emergency. Come quick. You let him know. Hey, I'm unavailable to come right now, but I'll be there as soon as I can. But it's an emergency. Cool. If it's an emergency, call a rapid response. You're going to get the doctor there, the supervisor there. You're going to get the whole hospital there if it's an emergency. They, oh, oh I, I, I'll wait. Yeah. Like, with the nurses, they were reluctant to call like rapid response unless they really, really need to. It's a real emergency. So they try to put pressure on you saying, come quick. Is this an emergency? If that's the case, I'm unable to get there. Obviously, call the rapid response. If they call it, they can get everybody there. If they say, yeah, I can wait. Then you know, it's not really as bad as she's making it seem, man. So that's a, that's a good way to handle that. See, I'm giving y'all all the gems and the jewels. But they report you for not showing up. So let's say you call the nurse. She agrees to, okay, y'all, breach an agreement. You give the treatment. I'll document it since the, since the patient needs it and I can't be there. You guys have a mutual understanding, mutual agreement. Okay. All right. That's how y'all working. Y'all go ahead and do that. But at minimum, man, at minimum, after all that is done, whenever you get some free time, whenever you're finally not busy anymore, you got you to gotta go back and at least check on the patient, see the situation. You get there, hey, I'm, I'm finally free. Was everything okay? Is the patient still doing bad? Did the treatment help? What's the saturation like? You got to do something to go see how the patient is doing. So I don't agree with reporting you. I just called and told you, hey, man, you could at least came by and seen the patient after, you, after I gave the treatment. You could at least came and checked on them because you could have checked on them. But to write you up and report you, I don't agree with that. Hey, baby, that's you? Baby, that's you? Babe. Is that you? Is that you? I'm on YouTube, man. Big Money Bound TV. All right, like I was saying. See, so you got to at least... At least check on them, bro. But hey, thanks for your question. Live life high. What's happening, homie? RRT member for sure. I know you, dog. RRT member for sure. All right. First question. Do you feel like you're overworked or overtasked? I'll go back to the question I was just asked. Like, if we short staff, of course I'm going to feel overworked, overstaffed, over, overtaxed because there's not that much staff there. But if we got adequate staff, I feel like everything is good if I got a light, normal, cool assignment. So it all depends on how many therapists that we have on shift. We got, a, we, got a, we got enough. We got no call out, no sick call, no emergencies, no vacations. Then we good. 
But other than that, yeah, I'm gonna be overtired, so I'm gonna work for sure, man. But hey, with that being said, I'm still human. I can only do what I can do. I got one speed. I got one speed. The speed I'm going is fast and efficient. Make sure I get everything done properly. Now, once we get busy, and I can't speed up. No, no, no. I'm already, I'm going my one speed. The fast and effective speed. I'm going my hardest all the time. I don't got no second gear. This what I'm giving you is all I got. And I can't, because I'm already going fast. I only got one speed. All right, second question. Do you feel like you, or specifically the skills you offer, are respected by majority of the RNs and doctors? All right, the skills that I offer. What's that, babe? Come on, I don't get no love? No, Come on, I don't get no love. All right. She loved me, y'all. She loved me. All right. So, do you feel like you or your... Do you feel like you, or specifically the skills you offer, are respected by majority of the RNs or doctors? Alright, man. With that question, really, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, especially, like, I'm kind of getting, like, from therapists and stuff, man. The questions I've been asked, like, does the nurse, I feel like I'm being respected by the nurse? Like, bro, the nurse is a worker, like, so the nurse is not nobody that's, like, I want to get respect from her. You feel me? Like, kind of looking up. Do you respect me? Like, as of a child, respecting a parent. Like, it's the RN. If, if it's only one chief, it's only one chief, and the rest Indians. It's only one chef, and the rest is cooks. The top dog is the doctor. Everybody up under that just taking orders, man. Everybody just taking orders. The nurse, the therapist, say, like, I ain't really worried about if the RN respects me. I don't really like. All I know is. During any kind of like emergency emergency situation where respiratory is needed, whenever I show up, the nurses are always relieved. Oh man, thank you. I'm glad you're here. So I know that they appreciate my services, but I don't really look at it as like, do they respect me? I don't really like nobody should go around the hospital to disrespect me. people or like respect me. It's all like professionalism between one another. You feel me? So I wouldn't say like respect. And when it comes to the doctors. The doctors, I feel like the doctors are like very professional and like very like team oriented, especially when it comes to working with the respiratory therapist, especially on a ventilated patient. I have plenty of cases, plenty of scenarios where I was in an ER, intubated a patient. I asked the doctor, hey doc, what vent settings do you want? Because you know, that's the doctor. I ain't gonna overstep my boundary, just go to putting in orders and doing this. The doctor says, hey man, don't worry about it. He says, you're the respiratory therapist, you go ahead and put whatever you think is right. I'll sign off on it. See, that's cool. Then I go ahead. And I do that. But other than that, everybody else is professional. The doctors is just, the doctors is, and the therapists are like real cool because the therapist has studied the lungs for like two years in the respiratory care program. Now the doctor, who is the top, I'm not I'm sure they didn't spend two whole years just studying the lungs like a therapist did. So the therapist would probably know a would know a lot more than the doc when it comes to like what mold may be a little better, what, what um, rate may be better to blow off his CO2 in this time frame. So, hope I answered your question, man. Number three, I've heard many stories about RTs that don't know what the hell they're doing, causing a lot of problems. Ever run into this sort of thing? All right, so. And, that, and whoever, the, whoever, like, that therapist is that could have been blamed for doing something wrong. Like, in their defense, it's so many things in the field, so many pieces of equipment. I don't know what the, what the scenario was, what the, what the case could have been, but if you haven't used, like, let's say, for example, you haven't used a portable ventilator in a long time, when you get it, you know what it is, but you may have to just mess with it a little bit before you really remember, okay, yeah, that's what it is. So it just could have been like, they probably could have just forgot something, had a little brain fart. You know, man, things happen. Like sometimes I forget things like, oh, I can't forget, I forgot it. Here it is. So like, I would say they don't know what the hell they doing. Sometimes people forget, man, because to get your license, to be employed in a hospital, and to be still working in a hospital, you got to have some knowledge of what you're doing. So it's not, they don't know what the hell they doing. They just probably forgot something. Hey, sometimes that happens. I never came around across a therapist who didn't know what the complete hell they was doing. 
Now, nah, some fans probably didn't know what the hell they was doing. I show them, learning experience. It's all a process. Now they know it. Same thing with me. I don't have a piece of equipment. I was just recently, I was using a nebulizer. I had never seen it before. What the hell is this? What the hell is this? Mess with it a little bit. Put, okay, okay. Exact same thing, but I had to get, you feel me? I had to get used to it. So I've come across it a couple times, but not to the point where it's like causing a problem because that would be something like serious that they would have to address. Third question. Oyana Dawa Loki Yasang Kim. All right. Do you ever worry about accidentally making mistakes or killing someone? Whoa, you came out that pretty strong, didn't you, dog? Do you ever worry about accidentally making mistakes or killing someone? Nah, I never thought about killing nobody or dead. My life was a respiratory death, man. Now, when I was in that program and I went by the grill with that, uh, but I never thought about making a mistake and killing somebody. Like, that's a little too negative for me. That's a little too far fetching. So, that's too extreme for me to think about. I'm going to make a mistake that's so bad that I'm going to kill somebody? That's something that's, bro, I don't know. What I'm going to be like? I'm going to like, you mean like, I'm going to trip over the, I'm going to trip over the ventilator, I'm going to trip, trip over the life support cord in the wall and pull it out and then, Take that person off life support and just kill him like that? Cause I ain't never thought of nothing like that. No, bro, you hey, 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 man. Oh man, I like respiratory therapy, but I'm worried. What if I make some mistakes and I kill someone? I'm worried too, though, and I'm scared. Hey, I'm scared. Now nah, you scaring me, though. I'm you scaring me, man. I'm worried, what if I make some mistakes and I kill someone? The mistake that you can make that could kill someone would have to be very, very extreme. Like you going into a patient's room, pulling out the ventilator cord out the wall, taking them off life support, and then saying, oh, I thought that cord was the phone charger. <laughs> That's a huge mistake. Something like that happened is very far-fetched. No, I never thought, oh man, I don't know about that one. I never, I don't know how to answer that, man. Hey, man, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, I'm worried as well, man. You cannot be lazy, careless, sleepy, or any of that. How much sleep do you get as a respiratory therapist? Hey, man, if you've been, if you're a lawyer subscriber to the Big Money Bound TV, you, you know I don't sleep. I just take naps, man. I don't sleep. I take naps. Man, you see my eyes? See how my eyes be like money baggy? The money bag. And I don't be, I don't be taking, I don't be getting no sleep. No. I'm grinding. All I can do is naps. I'm back to it. Beep, beep, clocking back in. So I don't take, I don't sleep. I just nap. I want to be really alert on my job to prevent forgetfulness. I want you to be really alert too, man. Because after this dance, you're saying I want you to be real alert. Real sure, real confident, and real positive that you know you're gonna do the right thing and not make any mistakes so horrific that you actually kill someone. That'd be bad. So best of luck, man. RRT Posse, bro, stay at school, you can make it happen. Don't take the jokes and stuff too personal, bro. Thanks for the comment and the questions. Shayoma, Shayoma, that's my homie. What's happening, dog? RRT Posse, remember from like the second video. She been, she been rocking and holding it down for a minute. I like how you be um, reposting the videos on um, Instagram, showing that you was in your house watching on the big screen TV. I love that, man. That's why, that's real support. I appreciate that, dog. All right, her question is, what semester or part of the program was hardest for you? All right, the hardest semester was the fourth semester, right before the, the last, the semester before the final one, the fourth semester, when I had lost my auntie. I talked about it during the, um, the, the um, my respiratory program story. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out, man. My two years of respiratory care program, toughest two years of my life, I survived. Please go and check it out. Very detailed, very heartfelt, you'll love that. But that was the toughest semester for me, man, when I lost my auntie, man. I'm like, man, I told my auntie, like, auntie, man, you know your boy, your nephew finna graduate, man. I'm finna get this fatty. I'm finna be, you know, no more hard times. We're gonna be all right, man. I'm gonna get the house. I'm gonna get the car. I'm gonna do my thing, man. And I did it. I did it. But like, 
like she not here to witness it. You feel me? Like, bro, I got, I gave myself the chills. Like, bro, is that, is that real? You feel me? Like, bro, I'm serious. Like, is that real, man? Like, she ain't getting to see it. You feel me? But she's still ahead though. You feel me? So that was the hardest semester. And the hardest part, if you watch this, if you watch my story, you already know, man. That pharma, that pharmacology, man. Hey, man. The respiratory meds, no problem. I knew all of those. I knew all the respiratory meds. That's only like I only had like fifteen of those. I was like, you, know, I only see like probably at the most ten of those throughout my career, whatever. But when you using meds like propofol, sedation meds, vasopressors, like you using all these beta blockers, all these like. All these drugs that I'm never gonna administer as a therapist, I got nothing to do with. I gotta know the onset, the duration, how to probably give it. Man, I was, bro, my head was spinning. That was the hardest part for me, man. That pharmacology. Alright, thanks for that question, though, dog. Remain loyal, y'all. I appreciate that. Keep it trilla. Alright, what you know about that trill, fam? What you know about that, man? When you was in the program, how much time did you spend studying? And did you feel like you were, do you feel like you're paid fairly for the work you do or overpaid, underpaid, without getting too much into detail, of course? All right, first question. When you're using the program, how much time did you spend studying? Man, bro. Being that when I was in the program, I was in school or at work every day for two years in a row, I studied every free chance I got. When I say every free chance, man, I mean Every free chance. I'm in the hospital walking through the hallways. I had notes written on flashcards. I'm looking down, studying notes. Now you'll be in the hallway, you'll, you'll be texting, looking down. I'm in my flashcards looking down, just studying, man. I ain't had no social media, no Instagram, no nothing, because I don't I couldn't get no distractions, but I ain't created a social media account until I was going into my last semester of the program. Cause I knew I had to be focused, man. So any free time I got on the bat in the bathroom on the toilet. You feel me? I'm just, bro, going over my study card. Seriously. I don't date. In the movies, you know, like the first 20 minutes is number previews. Hey, man, bro. I'm doing it, like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. On my way to school, on test day, I would record the teacher giving a, um, study re a study guide, the review, test review. My way home from school, I'm playing that in my car. Playing that. That weekend, driving to work, I'm playing that study review. I'm playing that study review. I literally study every chance. I, man, I ain't, I'm in the, Lord forgive me, I was in the church house studying, man. Turn up Corinthians, I'm turning, I'm turning the, the note card up. I'm turning the note card. They saying, I'm turning the Bible verse, I'm turning to the next chapter in the book. I'm really like, I was really like studying every free chance I got. For the work you do, are you overpaid or underpaid? Without well, getting too into detail, of course. It all depends on what day you catch me, man. If it's one of them days when I'm super busy, I don't got killed. I work so hard, I feel underpaid like a mug. Hey, I feel underpaid for real, man. Now, if it's one of them days where I'm in the ER, I only see one patient, two patients, I feel like I'm overpaid. I feel like, really, I feel like I just committed a crime. I feel like I just stole money from the hospital. Y'all paid me for 12 hours and I only did 10 minutes of work? I feel like I robbed somebody, man. Then I feel overpaid. So it all really just depends on like how busy my day is. Thanks for that question, though, homie. Sky Harris, what's happening? You a lawyer when I see you keep coming back, that's real. What would be a good stethoscope for a respiratory therapist to use? That's a good question. I got a video coming up about this. So I mean, I didn't answer your question right now, man. Let's move along. No, I'm answering, I'm answering your question. The best stethoscope to get for a respiratory therapist, somebody who's out of school, a respiratory therapist, a lit, any kind of litman. I say litman because I, I love the litmans. They're very good. You can hear them. You can put them, bro. You can hear those perfectly fine. That's for a respiratory therapist. But for a respiratory therapist student, the stethoscope I recommend getting, go to Wal, go to Walgreens. It's a stethoscope itself for nine ninety nine. It's a cheap one. You put the pieces in your ear, it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna almost hurt your ears until you find the perfect spot. 
It's nothing fancy at all. But the reason you want to get this is, with that stethoscope, it's all about placement over the lungs. All of, you got to be in the you got to be in the right place to hear the lungs adequately. You got to be in the right place. With that litman, I can put that litman up here on your collarbone. I'm gonna hear your breath sounds. I can put the litman over the covers that the patient is wearing, put it to the chest, and still hear the breath sounds fine. I'm up here still hearing breath sounds. With that litman, you can put it anywhere. But to learn the proper placement of where to put the stethoscope. You want to go get that cheap one because it has to be in the right spot for you to hear the long sounds, the breath sounds. That's what I recommend. Then by using that, you really learn in your craft, you learn exactly where to go. So when you do use that litman and you get it, you can be like, whoa, this is, that's crackles. That's wheezing. You feel me? Crackles, wheezing, rails, coarse. It's going to be so easy for you, man. So that's what I recommend. Now, I know you may be tempted to. First day of school, first month, first semester of school, or whatever. You want to go in there with your lip and on, looking the part. You want to look the part, or you want to really like fit the part, really understand it. Like, that's just what I recommend doing. You don't got to. That's my answer for your question. All right. Lauren Ware. Lauren Ware. What's happening, Shorty? Hey, first, I'd like to say I appreciate all the videos. Hey, I appreciate your appreciation, man. Thank you. Ain't nobody else even say thank you. Or, no, somebody did say thank you. Ain't nobody else let me know that they appreciate my videos and like what I'm doing. Say, so, hey, I appreciate your appreciation. That's real. But I wanted to ask you, what are some good shoes for a clinical in your opinion? All right, now. Y'all already know what I'm going to get with this. If you're a lawyer, big money bound TV subscriber, you already know what I'm going with this. In my opinion, I don't mess with Skechers. I don't mess with Asics. I don't mess with no Clarks. I don't mess with no New Balance today, man. I got to be Nike'd up, it got to be Nikes, or it got to be Retro J's. That's me, so. And you know, I'm all about style. So long as they look good, you going to be good, you feel me? As long as they look nice, I just, man, a nice pair that look nice and that's comfortable, you feel me? Comfortable, comfortable. I put style over comfort, but comfort got to be in there. Just man, any pair that look nice and you got to be matching. So don't be out there, you wearing dark blue scrubs. You got on fireball red shoes. Like, come on, come on, man. Come like, no, no, man, come on, like, at least be matching with the shoes you got on, man. So, a nice pair of shoes, nice pair of Nikes, man. Go get you some Nike. Go get you some Nikes or some Retro J's, man. And that's, a, hey, that's big money bound TV. I'm giving my honest answer. That's what I recommend in my opinion. But then, comfort is last. So just make sure they're comfortable. It can be those first two things. They can be stylish, they can be Nikes. But if they ain't comfortable, don't do it. Jamal B. Hey, what's up, bro? Do you ever see yourself becoming a manager or are you satisfied with just being a staff RT? Yeah, that's real, bro. This, this answer may even shock you. Like, I'm satisfied with just being a staff RT, man. Being a staff RT got me. It got me to like the place I am today, you feel me? God, really, you feel me? Like, the more like Sometimes it's better just get your money and just stay low. Get your money and just lay low, man. Do your job and just lay low. People see you coming through that, rising up, doing this. People gonna be quick to try to like bring you down. You gonna be saying you gonna be getting all kind of write ups. People bring you to the office for discussions. I seen it happen to people too many times, man. I knew people who start. I, I've been working in the hospital for like twelve years. I started off as a therapist. I started off as a transporter. Then I went to an ED tech, and I became a therapist. I know people that was in the hospital before me was a um, transporter doing a the job. They promoted them up to the supervisor level. Within five months, four, six months, they was gone, man. They invited them up for this and that. People don't like to see you rise and like, just keep. So I'm just, hey, man, I'm happy when I'm at anything I'm doing. Like I'm doing my big money bound TV. I'm doing my other, other business products, other business ventures. I know you see I got the big money bound product. We can have the merchandise coming soon. So, hey, just hold on. So, I just do that on the outside, just staying low key, but at the, at the workforce, respiratory therapy style. Respiratory therapy. That's it, man. Oh, you're so nice, respiratory therapy. Good morning, respiratory therapy. You already know where I'm going with it. Gerald, what's your regular schedule like? Is it three days on and four days off? It's something like that. The regular schedule, the regular schedule is three days. And it'll be broken up either way, however you want to do it. You'll have three days and you'll work every other weekend. 
But my schedule, whenever they say, Randy, we don't need you. That's my day off. Whenever they say, Randy, we don't need you today, man. I go get it. That's just, it's in my genetics, man. That's just, it's in me. I got to like, I got to, you feel me? Big money bound. Like, I got to, it's just, it's rooted in me. I got to go get the riches. I got to like be financially fit. I got to make sure I can still take care of my lady. We can still eat good. We can still look good. We can always have emergency money. You feel me? So I, I always just go. Even if I'm tired and I'm sleepy, man, like I find a way to get motivated and push myself to do it. I think about them hard times I went through and I ain't trying to go through them ever again or have nobody in my family go through them ever again or nobody I bring into the world go through them ever go through them. So I got to make sure I got that Fetty on deck. Appreciate your question, man. Savannah Sutton. Just subscribe. Thank you. I appreciate that. Welcome. Our RT member. Let's give her a round of applause. All right. Her question. Love your vids and your energy. How, man, you, I'm loving the love today. I'm really liking this q and I feel love. Y'all got me blushing, man. Y'all see that? See them cheeks? See me up there? Okay. For your next Q&A, my question is, how does the scheduling work? Is it usually like seven days straight that you work? Whoa, whoa, come on, it's, it's, it's seven days in a week, baby. All right. Can you choose to only work four days a week? Thank you. Nah, you don't work seven days straight on a regular schedule. But now, if you want to, you know, you're a respiratory therapist that's like real ambitious, you got some goals you're trying to fulfill, you're trying to buy a house, trying to get you the car, whatever you're trying to do, you can if it's available. Overtime is there. No problem. Ball out. But that wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be a set schedule that they would give you seven days straight. And you normally work three days a week, 12-hour shifts. Three days a week, 12-hour shifts. That's the regular schedule. Thank you for your question. And that's all we got, man. We done, man. So, hey. Thank you for watching this whole video. If you did that, man, you know you're a true RRT Posse member. You're a big money bound fanatic. I appreciate all the support, all the love, man. Thank y'all for like supporting the channel, holding it down. Please share my videos. Please tell a friend about my channel. Tell that friend to go tell another friend. Once I get my channel to, once we get the channel to, once we get the channel to a thousand subscribers, I'm gonna show you that respiratory therapy check. It's so heavy, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like, Lift it up, but I got this right here. I know you see that, so I probably care. So, y'all get us to 1,000, man. 1,000 subscribers. I appreciate the support. Y'all will be easy. Big Money Bound merchandise coming soon. Baby! Yeah. I love you.